What's up everyone? John from ARTV. It's time for another Redemption Review. Redemption Reviews are where I take an album review that I had previously done, but it's so damn bad that I unlist that one and I make a new one that actually makes sense here for you. I initially reviewed this album whenever it came out in 2011, and now I'm redoing my review of it here in 2017. This was a great Foo Fighters album. It won Grammys for its songs, it got nominated all over the place, and it definitely deserved that in my opinion. This is my favorite album by the Foo Fighters, and I recently put out my top 10 that featured several songs from this. If you want to see my top 10 Foo Fighters list, it'll be linked at the end of this video. Album number 7, Wasting Light by the Foo Fighters, was a return to form. It was a return to the basics as well. Dave Grohl and the rest of the band invited producer Butch Vig to Dave Grohl's garage, where they recorded this album straight to tape. If you're wondering what straight to tape means, essentially it means just that, recording it like they did in the old days, straight to tape tape and not allowing room for mistakes, which is very cool. It makes you play tighter as a band and you actually learn the songs and know the songs. And it's not just something where they're taking it, plugging it into a computer and saying, all right, that guitar didn't sound that great, or Dave, your vocals were a little weak on that one, but it's fine, we'll fix it in post. It's basically the equivalent now, what they do with some of these like Pro Tools and GarageBand, everything else that they edit in these days. It reminds me of what CGI is to actual real life stunts in movies but here they took away the CGI and it's just the bare bones and I love the end result. It's no secret that Wasting Light was a smashing success. I already talked about the Grammys, but it was also commercially viable. It sold over 230,000 copies its first week, which was their best sales week other than 2005's In Your Honor. It was definitely a resurgence for them and it saw them taking over the rock charts and the alternative charts and crossing over to the mainstream once again. They had a powerful hit in the form of Rope, which lingered for quite a while and I do love that song. It took a little bit for me to warm up to it. It initially wasn't one of my favorites, but at this point, I see it as being one of the greatest Foo Fighters singles. We also have another legendary single in the form of Walk, the last song, the closer on here, that also has an amazing and hysterical music video to go along with it. This track really brings out a lot of emotion and tension and feeling, and that's what I get from this record. It's definitely more personal with its connection, and Dave Grohl really lets that side of him out whenever it comes to pinning these songs. Pat Smear officially rejoined the band as a guitarist when this album was coming out. He had been touring with them again and they finally made it official. Pat had been kind of out of the band for a while but still on good terms and keeping up with them and occasionally playing shows, that sort of thing. And now he was back in there, taking some of the pressure off of Chris Shiflett and obviously off of Nate Mandel. Two guitarists and they have three now, so it really rounds out their sound and you can tell that on Wasting Light. They have a great rhythm section thanks to Nate Mandel and obviously Taylor Hawkins being a beast on the drums through and through, I just think this is our most engaging record because it is very hard rocking. There's a lot of material that you can sink your teeth into, and at the same time, it's also vulnerable and personal, which you just wouldn't expect, at least on first listen. Arlandria is a great ode to Dave Grohl's hometown of Arlandria, Virginia, and here we see a song that does a lot of what Wasting Light does. It builds, it grows, and then it unleashes during the hook, and obviously Grohl's rough around the edges voice whenever it can start to howl and scream with the guitars. It's always a a fantastic experience. We've got other tracks like Back and Forth where it's just a little bit of rough and ready. I love the kind of chugging guitar on that one that opens this thing up big time. And then we've got something like Miss the Misery which contains the lyrics that they named the album after Wasting Light. And you once again see the anger and the fervence and the passion coming through in his voice and the instrumental as well. It's a way for them to just unleash some of that rage that's been bottling up. Rope's rather stuttered guitars in the opening are definitely something that have won me over with time. I keep coming back to this song now, especially in preparation for this redemption review, and it's something that I really do enjoy, especially those screams from Grohl right before the chorus hits you, and the chorus is gripping as well. Altogether, the singles on this record have really stood the test of time. Another one that was released as a single and has fared very well over the years with fans is These Days. That one does start off slow again, and I do like that. It's maybe not my favorite opening, but once that chorus hits and it really just roars to life, it shows you why the Foo Fighters are the arena-ready band that they are. This could knock any fan's socks off. Two songs I've found that do have some similarities between them would be Dear Rosemary and Miss the Misery. Both of them kind of have an intertwining opening that features some loud guitars, yes, and it takes a little bit for it to get started, and then they have kind of a similar approach to getting around to the chorus. And a lot of these songs on the album, you could argue, yes, they do have a build up to the chorus, and that's expected for the foos. It's something that they're kind of known for, and they definitely played to the strength on this album. But here, these tracks just do feel a bit too 
similar to each other. And it's not a huge problem for me. It's not a detractor, really. It's just something that I've noticed more and more with time. You're gonna wanna break out your slow cooker for I should have known because this one only gets better the longer you let it simmer. As you start to peel back the layers, you see that the vulnerability and the different tempo is there. And Grohl is able to pull this off, so are his bandmates, because they are good at slow songs as well. And whenever they can make these actually explosive, maybe in a lyrical way, it shows that they don't always rely on that powering, towering guitar to just rip down the wall and just go balls out. It's not like that here. It's something where you see a little bit of a string section popping up, something that feels a bit more spacey, maybe more inclined to skin and bones, which is something they did live and just the second half of their double album that came out in 2005. In Your Honor was a great record, but that second disc often goes overlooked, and I do have some favorites on there. White Limo came out screaming and picked up a Grammy for best hard rock and metal performance. It's something that you just don't see coming from Grohl and Company, especially the first time I played this album. I picked up this CD and I was thinking to myself, all right, once we get to White Limo, okay, what's this song gonna be about? Oh my God, they're screaming very loudly. This is intense, but I kind of fucking love it. The guitar riff is just so menacing. It's bigger and angrier than the Foos normally get, and that's why it stands out in a good way. I know some fans hate this because it's mostly screamed and howled vocals and kind of screeching guitars, loud thunderous drums and just driving it into you, but I'm okay with this song completely. It does stand out, but not in a bad way whatsoever. The only other song that I really have left to talk about is another very aggressive one that kicks off this album. If you watched my top 10 Foo Fighters, you know it's in my top 10. It's called Bridge burning. This song is definitely just a towering presence. It's something that is undeniably fun, and it's undeniably Foo Fighters. It has many of their different sides of their persona, and here they put out kind of a hardcore, hard rocking vibe, but also kind of a down-to-earth verse to chorus transition. I love everything about this song. It does a great job with its lyrical content, and it's talking about kind of the end of times for somebody who was maybe a hypocrite or maybe had it coming, and I love just how they tear everything apart and do burn those bridges. From the wonderful Dear Rosemary to the change of pace matter of time that features such a great hook and throughout this album many great choruses, many great lyrics, and just an overall great vibe. Wasting Light definitely gets the job done. It scratches that itch that you were looking for, at least I had been looking for, because while I am a big Foo Fighters fan, I'm not always in love with every single song on their album. In fact, at times they feel a bit monotonous and repetitive. And there are albums that I absolutely adore from them. There's just not really any that I would give a perfect score to, and this one is no exception. This does, however, get a very strong rating of 4.5 out of 5, and gets the honor of being my favorite Foo Fighters album. How does Wasting Light hold up for you. I'd be interested to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section down below. It's been about seven years at the time of recording this video since it originally came out, so I'm curious. Did it hold up for you or no? Is it a total flop at this point? Anyways, it's all just my opinion. If there's other redemption reviews that you want to see me do for my old reviews, do a new updated review on it, please let me know in the comments section down below, and don't forget to drop a like on the video while you're here. If you're able to support me on Patreon, it's this annotation over in the corner, or if you'd like to pick up some merch, it's the second link down below it supports the channel and helps me keep making these videos. If you want to see another Foo Finders video, that top 10 right over here, or another recent redemption review right over here. Other than that, I'll see you very soon right here on ARTV.